On this video, I'm going to tackle the subject of PWM's pulse width modulation and how to generate it using the most analog possible way I could think of, using op amps and some oscillators. And also, I'm going to talk about how to give it control voltage so the entire process of PWM control can be automated. So stay tuned. So on the first part of this circuit, I use a CD40106 hex inverting Schmidt trigger oscillator. I use just one of the oscillators in order to generate a sawtooth wave centered around six volts. The signal then goes through an op amp based buffer and then the signal uh, gets put through a one microfarad capacitor and a 100K resistor to ground in order to center the signal around the zero volts line. That signal then goes into the non-inverting input of another op amp set up as a comparator, uh, the inverting input of which is the reference voltage. And this is basically the control voltage input of the PWN generation signal. The output of that comparator either goes to the positive rail or the negative rail based on whether the inverting input is greater than or less than the non-inverting input. Since the output of the comparator is either positive 12 volts or negative 12 volts for my purposes of using this PWM signal for a motor, I want to get rid of the negative voltage um, which with a diode from ground then I put it through another voltage divider to set up the peak voltage to whatever I want, in this case 9 volts, around 9 volts. And then the output of that gets buffered and sent out as the PWM signal. So here it is, a PWM circuit. So first I have this CD40106 um, oscillator. I have two of them actually. The first one is a sawtooth wave generator um, and I have an adjustable frequency potentiometer here so that when um, when I move it on the fly it changes the frequency um, it's got a pretty good range down to up to about a kilohertz uh, two kilohertz and down to about 250 hertz and then I have the signal from that going in through a buffer. This is a TLO74. The first one is a buffer, then goes through this little capacitor, 100K resistor to ground uh, to bring it down to the signal down to center. That center signal gets rebuffered and gets put through a comparator, which is this third op amp on the right bottom and the output signal of that gets readjusted to get rid of the negative voltage with the diode and the voltage divided. Um, so the max voltage is about nine, nine and change volts. And here it is on the oscilloscope. Now I can, based on the threshold voltage on this comparator, I can on the fly change the PWM duty cycle. And that goes very easy. And the range of that is all the way down to nothing and all the way up to almost complete. Let me change it back to 50 here, about 50% duty cycle. Now I have this um, last oscillator here and uh, the bottom, and this is a low frequency oscillator. And I have it making a triangle wave. Um, and when I take the triangle wave and I ground it, and when I take the input signal from the triangle wave, if I could get this out, Now, it basically oscillates. And there it is. 
is I have a control voltage from that oscillator it's going between positive uh, 3 volts and uh, or positive 1.5 volts and negative 1.5 volts based on the triangle wave and this is what it's doing to the duty cycle and you can still change the frequency on the fly but the duty cycle changes according to the control voltage and it's automated and you can see the light intensity changing based on that duty cycle Let me zoom out here so you can see the light intensity changing. Now, if you want to listen to it, you can listen to it. I'm going to turn on the speaker. It's going to make an annoying sound. So I have three ways of visualizing the PWM on the oscilloscope, on the light, and hearing it on um, the speaker. Let me turn that off because it's annoying. But there it is. So here's our PWM generator circuit. So it starts with this 4106, CD4106 oscillator. And it's a sawtooth wave generator. And so I'm going to probe the actual sawtooth wave. You can see it there. It is at around uh, six, uh, centered around six volts. I'm going to probe the area where um, it's being centered and brought to ground with the capacitor and resistor. So right there. And so that brings the sawtooth wave to um, ground, centered around zero volts. And it's about positive and negative 1.45. Then I'm going to probe the comparator, the output of the comparator. And so that is going to be right there. And that's what you get with the comparator. You see it's automated uh, with that oscillator. So the diode is right there. And so that takes away the negative voltage and it goes to a um, maximum of 12 volts. And then it goes through a voltage divider and then gets output to here. So it brings it down to a um, maximum of 9.3 volts. So that is it. And uh, I can bring this peak down to whatever I want. Um, this is gonna be for a motor. Um, but you can see the light intensity changing uh, based on the PWM signal. Now I'm going to show you this, uh, this low frequency oscillator. So the output of the low frequency oscillator is at the capacitor side here which is right there. So, we have to adjust this. And there it is, very low frequency, triangle wave oscillator. That triangle wave oscillator is being brought over here and being brought to ground through a uh, resistor and capacitor. And so you can see it here. There it is. And the output of that is being input as the control voltage. So now, once the control voltage is input, and this is the final product. Now 
let's listen to it. Now let's change the frequency. See the light intensity change too. 